culture that was living here when these images were created, it's other than word of mouth, it's the only way of storytelling, it's the only way of um, laying down laws for the community. So that, there's quite a significance there as you can imagine, communication and information. The peoples that lived here for, you know, in numbers, tens of thousands of years, lived in a very simple way and, and the first thing that comes to mind is that there was no written language. There's a lot of fish here. There are uh, bigger creatures than fish that might be understood to be a dugong, which we get off, uh, off the reef here. Within a couple of miles of every one of these significant sites, there's a freshwater spring and a camp place. That's where the women would be gathering tucker. The men would paint and there'd be a big party after the, after the painting in the pre-wet season. The other thing that's significant here is it's, uh, it's part of a, a special story. Um, the most significant uh, wanderer of this coast, um, Namarali, his resting place is uh, not too far from here, a little place called Langi, five kilometres inland. The story about Namarali and this site are connected, Namarali being the most important wanderer, and, and just taking this out a bit further, the three clans or tribes along this Kimberley coast, they're the only people in the world, in Australia and the world, to have Wanjina figures like the faces you see depicted, one, two, three, as their central creation ancestor. It was Wanjinas that created all of the land and the sea, all of the people and everything in it, and all of the laws to live by. So that's unique as well.